I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, April 28th meeting of the <coughs> Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. First item of business, uh, compliance with the open meeting law. The agenda was posted on the 24th at 2 p.m. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Next item is roll call. Supervisor Smith. Present. Supervisor Gruber. Present. Supervisor Schneider. Present. Supervisor Montemayor. Here. Supervisor Clark. Here. Supervisor Nelson. Present. Supervisor Prochek. Here. Supervisor Koch. Here. Supervisor Schobert. Here. Supervisor um, Brower. Here. Supervisor Jorgensen. Here. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Here. Supervisor Nenning? Here. Supervisor Abler? Here. Supervisor Kulo? Here. Supervisor Dam? Present. Supervisor Wagner? Here. Supervisor Immel? Here. Supervisor OJ? Here. Supervisor Hoffman? Here. Supervisor Hilbelink? Here. Supervisor Bosman? Here. Supervisor Veldman? Here. Supervisor Gehring? Here. Supervisor Testudi? Here. 25 supervisors present. Thank you. Uh, next item of business is approval of the April 21st, 2020 journal. Supervisor Brower. Motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Supervisor Hibley. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Hibley. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Okay, then all those in favor of approval of the journal say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item is the uh, appointments by the executive committee. Do we have a motion? Supervisor Wagner? I move for approval. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Is there a second? Supervisor Adler? Support. Thank you, Supervisor Adler. Any discussion? Forgive me, it's hard to see the lights are kind of in my eyes. So all those in favor of the county board committee appointment say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Supervisor Wagner. All right, for the committee uh, locations. Finance, uh, the Lower East Theater, down here. Health and Human Services, Upper West Theater, up in this corner. Healthcare Center, down the hallway and down the stairs like you're leaving the building. It's the first room on your right, uh, room 7001. Human Resources, down here. Law and Art Gallery, past the entrance here where you came in. Planning, Resources, Agriculture and Extension, down that same far hallway, down the stairs and to the left, room 7006. Right next door to that is Property, room 7010. And the Upper East Theater by that white board is transportation. Okay, and with that, we'll recess to, uh, to uh, organize our committees. Okay, we'll reconvene tonight's meeting. Uh, roll call, please. Supervisor Smith. Present. Supervisor Gruber. Here. Supervisor Schneider. Here. Supervisor Montemayor. Here. Supervisor Clark. Here. Supervisor Nelson. Here. Supervisor Prochek. In attendance. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Koch. Here. Supervisor Schober. Here. Supervisor Brower. Here. Supervisor Jorgensen. Here. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Here. Supervisor Nenning. Here. Supervisor Abler. Here. Supervisor Kulo. Here. Supervisor Dan. Here. Supervisor Wagner. Here. Supervisor Immel. Here. Supervisor OJ. Here. Supervisor Hoffman. Here. Supervisor Hilbelink. Here. Supervisor Bosman. Here.
Supervisor Belvin. Here. Supervisor Garen. Here. And Supervisor Testruti. Here. All 25 are present. All right. Um, next is public address. There are none. Letters, communications, and announcements? We have none. And county administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am going to remove my mask for this report, so if the chair wants to move to the side a little bit more, or Cheryl does, that's up to you. Otherwise, I think we've got ample distance. Isn't this something? Well, I hope everything went well tonight. It appeared to do so. I think uh, this is a compliment to all involved with how this is working at the theater. So, well done. I wanted to share a couple of things. First, if you feel your committee assignment is not going to keep you busy enough uh, and you're looking to do more, and as you know, as a newly elected county board supervisor, as a county board supervisor, you can attend any committee meeting you wish and listen and learn and participate in that discussion with, with the committee chair's prerogative. But you're encouraged, especially as a new board member, to go around and visit other committees and go to different departments and don't hesitate to reach out to me or any department head for insight. You know you can do that. But if you're looking to do more, you want to get more engaged, in your email today, my executive assistant Elaine Bosman sent out a memorandum sharing that there are literally 75 advisory committee appointments available. 75. So again, if, if you're someone who is looking for a little bit more or want to be directly engaged, please look at that email attachment if you didn't receive it. It was again distributed today. And look at all the different advisory committees that you can participate on. Many of them, in fact most of them, the chair uh, will make those appointments as an elected official. If it's a citizen member, I generally do. And then some, in some instances, the committee actually makes the, commit, the appointment. But please follow up with uh, Chairman Vern Koch, either through email or phone call, whatever he prefers. But let him know if you're interested. Elaine will coordinate, and she does an excellent job with that. But a lot of opportunity to get more involved if you're so inclined. I want to thank Marilyn Montemayor, because at the last meeting we were sitting here, and as the elections were proceeding, she whispers to me, you gotta take some photos. This is historic. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, thank you for that prompting, Supervisor Montemayor. I, Emmett Feldner was here and I know he took a picture and was kind enough to put it on the front of the Plymouth Review, so thank you, Emmett. And we got some shots of Elaine and, and uh, Greg and the sheriff getting everyone's votes, but I was able to take a few snapshots while I was up here and we shared that with you as well. Marilyn just shared with me before I came up here that, you know, with all this going on with the coronavirus, we really should be documenting this as well. Because again, historic times, uh, many of us will look back years from now and, and hopefully go, wow, we got through it and we did the best we could. And uh, uh, to her credit, I not only appreciated that comment, but being old school myself, I have a binder now, all of six inches thick with all of the daily updates from our public health staff, all of our news releases, every order that came from the governor or from the state public health. And it's very helpful to me because as I pull things together, I can quickly look at that rather than trying to find it as a younger person would do on the, on the internet. So I wanted to briefly give you an overview of just where we've been in just the last six weeks. For many of us, it feels much, much longer than that. But we, we've gone through a lot in a short period of time. You know, it was just on March 11th, March 11th, that Wisconsin had six confirmed cases in the entire state. I was at your March 17th county board meeting, the last one we had in the county board chambers. And that night I reported to you that on March 17th, we had 72 confirmed cases across the state. 72. Four in Sheboygan County. On April 28th, we now have 6,289 Wisconsin confirmed cases. 48 in Sheboygan County. 
that number has increased dramatically. But the silver lining is thanks to the wonderful job particularly people have done in Sheboygan County with social distancing and all the sacrifices that have been made, whether you're essential or non-essential. As it stands today, we have five active cases. So if you look at that daily update that our public health staff provide and the dashboard that was just included, it really quickly gives you a, a quick snapshot of where we've been, how we're doing, and what's happening with the curve. And fortunately, uh, the, re the recovered cases continue to go up and the active cases continue to go down. And we certainly hope that that trend continues. That historical quick snapshot, December of 2019, coronavirus is detected. December of 2019. It's throughout numerous countries around the world. On January 30th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a public health emergency a month later. On March 12th, Governor Tony Evers declared a public health emergency. On March 13th, President Donald Trump proclaimed a national emergency. On March 13th, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services ordered statewide school closures. I can remember that week real vividly because all of the state superintendents, or school superintendents rather, were like, Okay, the governor has ordered the closure, but it doesn't have to happen today. They had until March 18th to implement it. But of course, some school districts were feeling, gee, should we do it sooner rather than later? They were seeking input from our public health staff. A lot of uncertainty that week, but ultimately all the schools, as you know, were closed. Guidance at the state and federal le level was changing daily, if not hourly. I mean, it was really difficult to respond to the information and share it with our citizens in a unified manner because as soon as you got something ready to send out, literally, we got different guidance from the state or federal government. For example, we received guidance limiting non-essential gatherings to over 1,000, to 250, to 50, to 10 in less than one week. It was difficult to keep up and respond to it and communicate it and then have to change it the next day or have information ready to send out and literally minutes before you hit the send button, uh, you, you needed to update it. On March 16th, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services ordered that all public and private mass gatherings of 50 or more people were prohibited. So very quickly, early March, those numbers continued to go down. On the 17th, just the next day, the Sheboygan County Board, you declared a state of emergency in Sheboygan County. You empowered the county administrator to undertake whatever is necessary and expedient for the health, safety, welfare, and good order for our citizens. That was a 60-day authorization. That's good through May 16th. And that's all the time I have. <laughs> I'm hoping that we won't need to extend that beyond May 16th. Obviously, that'll be your decision and we'll see what is in the best interest of our community. On March 17th, that same day, the last day we held our county board meeting in the county board chambers, non-essential businesses and gatherings were reduced to 10 with some exemptions. For example, those exemptions included healthcare providers, grocery stores, gas stations, auto repair centers, manufacturing, processing, distribution and production, utility and transportation services, and of course, state and local government. I mean, this is just so rapidly unfolding. Three days later, on March 20th, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services updated its mass gathering ban again and provided further clarity and more exemptions, including exempting commercial and nonprofit entities, childcare facilities, construction sites and projects, including public works and remodeling projects, financial institutions and services, food production and distribution, hotels, lodging, and laundromats. So a lot of activity about essential, non-essential, what's exempt, what's not. All activities that were exempt require and continue to require social distancing, use of personal protective equipment, and other safeguards. I think for many people now it's just becoming common sense. Businesses are taking action, we're all taking action to protect one another. On March 24th, 
the Wisconsin Department of Health Services took further action and the safer at home order was made. We're hearing a lot more about that in the media, the safer at home order. This order further defined essential activities, essential government functions, essential travel, non-essential operations, what's prohibited, what's not, and extended the governor's order or the state public health order, depending on how you want to look at it, through May 26th. That's what we're currently under. Those last few orders really didn't change a whole heck of a lot other than further define and clarify what the original order was setting out to do. Uh, Republican leadership has since filed a lawsuit challenging the governor's authority on extending it to May 26. We're all aware of that. We're reading about that. Uh, there may be some outcome to that here within the next week. But what's rather interesting about that process and the time and resources that are going into that challenge is that regardless of the outcome, the state Wisconsin Department of Health Services already has the statutory authority to act in the best interest of citizens' health and well-being. So I'm not so clear how much that's going to change if it goes through. The legislature could come in and remove or eliminate the state Wisconsin Department of Health Services statutory authority that's already there. They could change that. But right now, uh, public health has a lot of authority to take actions and put orders in place that are in the best interest of citizens' health and safety. So there you have it. That was just four weeks. Remarkable what's all played out. Sheboygan County government plans and preparations. I share your pride with the, with the teamwork that's being exhibited here. Uh, it, it's been a remarkable thing to be a part of. Um, our Health and Human Services Director, Matt Stripmotter, who I see here today, our Division of Public Health, Stark Grossman, Libby Jacobs, our Public Information Officer, you heard from some of them at that March meeting. They continue to do just stellar work, really sharp, professional, dedicated. Uh, our emergency management director, Steve Steiner. Steve reports directly to the sheriff. They do good work, but Steve Steiner, he's all in and uh, thankfully his 20 years of experience does good work. They're providing key, timely, critical information to the public and I've heard Senator Demon Lemieux and a number of people share that when they look at our Sheboygan County website uh, that they've yet to see another county that has a better one. And again, that's a reflection on our team and the people I just mentioned. Bernie Romer, our purchasing agent that we share with the city of Sheboygan, he's been around now for 20 years as well. This gentleman, I mean, he can find things. And to his credit, in early March, even before um, orders were coming down or emergencies were being uh, um, proclaimed, we were working, he was working to find personal protective equipment. We knew we were going to have to get what we could because, of course, we weren't the first county that this was happening. You know, we're learning from counties south of us and in other states and other countries. To Bernie's credit, he was able to acquire a stockpile. It's a minor one, adequate one, but we have been able to help people as needed. And certainly one of the first things we wanted to do was get PPE to our owned and operated nursing home, Rocky Knoll. Every Monday morning at 7.30, we have a pandemic administrative panel it's key community leaders that come together and talk about what they're doing and how they're preparing and what actions or steps they've taken. It includes representatives of the hospitals and clinics, healthcare providers, emergency responders, obviously public health, sheriff's department. I mean, and the schools, Jamie Schramm, who helped set this up for us today. Thank you, Jamie. He's always on those calls. They give updates. And it's an effective way for us to share and work in collaboration. And sometimes the level of information shared feels a little light, but without question, the passion of everyone involved, the commitment to work together and help one another, it's there, it's real. And I'll share an example in a moment. Rocky Knoll, we were the first county in the area to close to visitors on March 12th. We took decisive action right away and it contributed to protecting our residents and staff. So I compliment Kayla and her team for the work they've been doing, the contingency plans they have in place. I think Rocky Mill continues to be a leader in Sheboygan County and throughout the region. Our new HR director, Dennis Miller, 
Is Dennis with us yet, or did he have to head up? Dennis is down here in front. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to meet Dennis, please take the time to do so. He's been here six or seven weeks now and talked about getting thrown in to the fire, but Dennis immediately was engaged with policy development. How, does, how do we provide employees with emergency sick leave, FMLA, vacation? What does that look like? What if they can't take vacation? What adjustments do we make? All of that needs to be charted and written very effectively and communicated, and Dennis has been doing a great job. And then just giving our staff some comfort. They're scared. They're essential employees, and people are coming and going, and depending on your age, your health conditions, what have you, there's different angst throughout our 800 plus employees. And to the credit of HR, we now have 180 employees who voluntarily are working from home. So that created a safer work environment. We limited public access right away on March 24th to our county administration building and all the buildings. When I say limited, please call ahead, make an appointment, go to the website. You know, use good judgment. If you don't have to come in to do your family tree, now is not the time to do it, right? On April 2nd, we upped the ante and we required the public to come in appointment only, shut down the second and third floor of the administration building. We've taken steps to protect our staff and to protect the public. And the secured entrance that you supported, we have at the courthouse, thanks to your support, your leadership, and the good work of Corey staff and the Sheriff's Department, has that made a difference in protecting not only our staff, but the public. So that's worked out well. And Jim Tobias, bless his heart, building services staff are cleaning uh, and doing deep cleaning, more so than ever before, as you can imagine, just like all businesses and, and anybody should be doing if they want people to come and, and be a customer or their employees to be safe. But in addition to the deeper cleaning, Jim took the lead to work with the staff to put plexiglass and other safeguards in place. So if you go to the county clerk's office now, and most of you probably haven't, right? But if you do walk in there, if you make an appointment and you go in there, Cheryl and John are protected because there's a big sheet of plexiglass across their entire counter. And now when people come in based on an appointment, the register of deeds or HR, whoever it may be, they can go down to the court to the county clerk's office, meet with the person there based on an appointment, be behind protective a plexiglass so the employee and the customers are safer. If they need to go to a conference room, they can do so and have social distancing, wear masks. We really haven't seen a lot of people come in. I mean, the traffic's gone down significantly, but if someone has to come in for a birth certificate or whatever it may be, they can do so and they can be served safely. I mentioned the teamwork earlier, and, and you've, some of you have heard me say this before, but you learn a lot about your team during a crisis. You really do. And when COVID-19 was detected, and sadly we had our first death associated with COVID-19 at Sunny Ridge, did we learn a lot about one another? Ultimately, there were 19 individuals there between staff and residents that were positive for the coronavirus. It was essentially the largest outbreak we've had in Sheboygan County to date. Hopefully we won't see another. And it could happen to any nursing home. Any nursing home this could happen. They had 90 residents and a lot of more family members that were obviously scared or concerned. 150 employees, half of which who weren't sure if they should come to work or not, whether they thought they potentially had COVID-19 or were just scared. Significant staffing needs. It was a crisis. And within 48 hours, I participated in teleconferences led by our public health team, people I mentioned earlier, getting the state on the line, getting the Army Corps, not the Army Corps, the uh, National Guard on the line, getting our hospital providers on the line. I mean, it was all hands on deck. And what was really noteworthy for me, and I'll never forget this, I'll just, I'll just never forget how everyone pulled together but I'm like a fire where everyone will just run to that fire and do what they have to do and get that fire out and help that family in need and go home. Everyone pulled together, 
but it was a cautious, what do we do next? How do we make sure we're safe, our staff are safe, our families are safe when we go home? It was a more guarded approach to how we respond to emergency. I'd never experienced that in my career. St. Nick's and Aurora stepped up immediately, provided staffing support to bring some immediate need to that facility, and they needed it. And what a difference that made. Sunny Ridge employees, I can't say enough about them. They're like any nursing home, a lot of hardworking, dedicated, caring staff. And for those that felt healthy or perhaps weren't as scared or didn't have other uh, sensitivities, did they work hard to take care of those residents and protect those residents. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we avoided a broader spreading of the coronavirus. The number stayed at 19 and so far so good. But it really taught me a lot about, I knew we had good people, but to see how they all came together and on a, on a Friday teleconference, on a Saturday morning teleconference, National Guard is there Sunday, everyone was tested, all employees and residents, it was really well done. So finally, next steps ahead. We're all getting tired of this. The levels of angst and trepidation, stress are all over the board. Some of our staff are so consumed with this, I mean, they're tired. Fortunately, we've been able to bring some additional staff resources to bear, especially for public health. Other staff, probably tired of working at home. But, but we're working. There's a lot of people in our community that are stuck at home and wondering how they're gonna put food on the table or if they're gonna have a job to return to. There are others who are so concerned about their own health, they dare not come close to anyone else or go to a grocery store, whatever it may be. The angst is all across the board. I've shared with some of you, my wife's a nurse and my two daughters are in the healthcare field. They are in the front lines. It's just amazing to see the different levels of stress and angst that everyone feels. But I do think that, uh, I think Sheboygan County hopefully has seen the worst of it. I hope so. When we've seen our numbers continue to go down with the active cases, and that's happened now for a couple of weeks, that's very encouraging. None of us in this room know knows what's gonna happen next. And none of us have the answer. But it's why all of us need to pull together and work it through. And that's what's been happening at the state level. Uh, we're following the guidance of state public health. We're trying to be as consistent as we can, provide ideas, suggestions. The White House came out with guidance and CDC came out with guidelines for opening up America again came out, I think, two, three weeks ago. Governor Tony Evers in the Wisconsin Department of Health Services came out with a Badger Bounce Back Plan. Doesn't roll off the, the tongue. The Badger Bounce Back Plan. It is very consistent with the guidance that the White House, our president, CDC, has been sharing. Very consistent. That's a good thing because there's so much uncertainty already, the more we can be consistent in messaging, the better. No plan is perfect. You have to see the perfect plan. You have to see anything that's come out of the door and it's just perfect. No doubt there's room for improvement. So 18 members of the Wisconsin legislature wrote a letter to Governor Evers with a four-week plan, demanding that it be implemented immediately. And that reminded me of Dr. Fauci saying, we won't be necessarily establishing the timetable. The coronavirus will be establishing the timetable. So I thought that was an interesting approach. But feedback was provided by the legislature, by these 18 members. And then just this week, the Wisconsin Manufacturing Commerce, Commerce came out with a back-to-business plan. I read all of them this week. Went through every single one of them. And believe it or not, it doesn't take that long. You can get through all of these in about an hour. The Wisconsin manufacturing and commerce back to business plan, I think has some good ideas in it. I think there's some good thoughts in there. So what we need 
our state leaders who are willing to sit down at the table and talk. Just like we do at the county level. Just like every successful business does. We need state leaders who can sit down and put their egos aside and focus on the health of our state and our citizens and talk. And the fact that we don't have that as a stronger expectation in this state blows me away. Just blows me away. We're wasting time and resources when that doesn't happen. So all of you have people that you know at the state level, Republican, Democrat, Independent, I don't care. We should expect them to talk. I got a call from uh, Supervisor Jerry Jorgensen yesterday and he, he asked me some good questions and I wanted to end on that. And essentially he was asking, well, how are we looking here in Sheboygan County? Because this Badger Bounce Back plan involves a number of milestones or steps that need to be met before we would potentially open for business. And I mean fully open because there is a lot of business going on. We just need to keep turning that dial. But if we're going to fully open by May 26th, the Badger Bounce Back Plan involves downward trajectory of COVID-19 cases reported. Unfortunately, we're not seeing a downward tra trajectory necessarily in Sheboygan County. We're seeing more cases, but the trajectory of positive cases or active cases has dropped like a rock. And that's the key one to focus on, and that is really encouraging. We must have robust lab capacity and testing, and that's where... Supervisor Jorgensen called me and said, what's going on with testing? You know, I, I get that question a lot, so I appreciated him raising it yesterday. How are we doing with testing? The answer is not that good. We're not doing that good in Sheboygan County with testing. We're still just testing people that show significant symptoms. Or if the National Guard comes in because there's a crisis and tests every resident and every staff person, we're not testing to the extent we should be. It is encouraging that lab capacity appears to be improving. It is encouraging that there's more tests available, including the swabs and the things you need to do the test, but it's not where it needs to be and we have to continue to put more resources in that area. Because if there's a big spike, if we turn the dial and there's a big surge, we've got to have the ability to do adequate testing. And I think, I think the public's gonna demand more testing to feel safer going back to work or being a customer. Strong capability to do contact tracing. That was another key in this plan. We're fortunate there. We have eight individuals in our Health and Human Services Public Health Division who do tracing and we've just added four more LTEs. And some of these LTEs were prior uh, nurses and, and public health officers, I mean, really sharp people. So we're, we're in good shape there, and we could, we could take more capacity there. So I'm feeling like we've checked that box reasonably well for Sheboygan County. Increased health care capacity, I think we've checked that box as well. In fact, if you talk to anybody from the hospitals, they're very quiet, very quiet. Emergency rooms, elected surgery, it hasn't been happening. Why? Because they were preparing for the surge, the big ramp up preparing their contingency plans, they took appropriate steps. But because the social distancing and the other steps we've taken have worked so well, and good fortune, uh, they're quiet. But we are prepared now with uh, our hospitals and clinics to really be able to take on a surge and do more. So I feel like we've checked that box for Sheboygan County. And then finally, procurement of PPE. It is maddening to me when I hear about anyone in the direct care field, direct care professionals that don't have PPE. And it's personal for me, because I mentioned my family, but it should be personal for anybody's family. If your loved ones are in the front lines and they don't have adequate PPE by now, something is wrong. And the feedback we're getting is that right now in Sheboygan County, what we have at all of our nursing homes and hospitals is, hospitals is adequate. It's kind of a soft, well, we're doing better than we were four or six weeks ago, and that's for certain. We're getting good reports that it's better, and our stockpile is better. We have a state stockpile, we have the county stockpile that's all coordinated now through Steve Steinert, our emergency management director, 
that's better than it was four, six weeks ago. So overall, with the Badger Bounce Back Plan initiatives, I think Sheboygan County is in pretty good shape. But this is not a county by county plan. It's a statewide plan. And that clearly will be one of the ongoing discussions, I think, at the state level. Will it continue to be looked at from a statewide perspective? Or will they treat Bayfield different than they do Milwaukee? Personally, I think there might be some room for some give and take there. But, we got, but the data has to drive it. The science has to drive it. And obviously, we need to keep people safe. So there is a high-end overview on where we've been, where we're at, and what we're looking at. And overall, I'm encouraged, I'm feeling hopeful, and I feel like things have eased back a little bit for our team. The angst, the stress isn't quite what it was four weeks ago. I mean, it's, people are maybe getting more used to it. I hope it doesn't last long term. I hope we're not meeting in this theater all year but I want to compliment all of you for the changes you've made to keep one another safe and the leadership for how we continue to meet and get the, the citizens' business done. So be well. Thank you. Report on elections and meetings. All right. Finance Committee, the Chair is Supervisor Gary, Vice Chair Testrudy, Secretary Supervisor Obler, and the remaining members, Supervisor Wagner and Ziegelbauer. We meet in the Admin Building, Room 119, 302 when needed, second and fourth Wednesdays at 3.30. Health and Human Services Committee, Chairperson is Supervisor Hoffman, Vice Chair, Supervisor Brower, Secretary, Supervisor Gary. Additional members, Supervisors Schobert, Schneider, and Montemayor. Meeting location, Health and Human Services, first and third Tuesdays at 8 a.m. Healthcare Center, Chairperson is Supervisor Veldman, Vice Chair, Supervisor Brower, Secretary, Supervisor Bosman. Additional members, Supervisors Damp and Montemayor. They'll be meeting at Rocky Knoll West Conference Room, second Wednesdays at 9 a.m. HR Committee, Chairperson is Supervisor Damp. Vice Chair is Supervisor Testrudy. Secretary, Supervisor Prochek, with Supervisor Schneider and Nenick. Meeting location is the Admin Building, Room 302. Fourth Thursday, second Thursday when necessary at 3.30. The Law Committee, Chairperson Supervisor Nenick, Vice Chair Supervisor Jorgensen, Secretary Supervisor Hoffman, additional members, Supervisors Gruber and Schobert. They'll be meeting at the LEC West Conference Room. First Thursday, of the month, thirst, uh, third Thursday if necessary at 4.15. Planning Resources Ag and Extension Committee, Chairperson Supervisor Obler, Vice Chair Supervisor OJ, Secretary Supervisor Clark, additional members Supervisors Gruber and Nelson. They'll be meeting at UW Extension Room 5024, 3.30 on the second and fourth Tuesdays. Property Committee, Chairperson, Supervisor Nelson, Vice Chair, Supervisor Hobelink, Secretary, Supervisor Immel, additional members, Supervisors Cool and Smith. Admin Building, Room 119, first and third Tuesdays at 4.30. And finally, the Transportation Committee, Chairperson, Supervisor Testrudy, Vice Chair, Supervisor Wagner, Secretary, Supervisor Bosman, Additional members, Veldman and Ziegelbauer. Meeting location, either at the highway complex or airport, first Monday of the month at 9 a.m. Thank you. Next item of business is adjournment. Supervisor Testrudi. Supervisor Amel. Thank you. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, we're adjourned.